Okay guys, which one would you choose? An all motor buildup that makes 400 horsepower or a supercharged motor that makes 400 horsepower? Which one would you pick? Of course, you can always just have both. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and today it's time for you to make a choice. That's right, you need to choose between one motor that makes over 400 horsepower and the other motor that makes over 400 horsepower. Both of those motors are 4.6 liter two valve modular Fords. One's a naturally aspirated motor that makes over 400. One is a supercharged motor that makes over 400. The question is, which one do you choose? <laughs> well, that's why I'm here. I'm gonna show you the power curves and you get to choose. Okay, guys, we're here to answer the question, which one would you rather pick? A 400 horsepower naturally aspirated 4.6 two-valve buildup where we're doing the all-motor route, or would you rather just add a supercharger to a PI motor and do some pulleys and things and also get 400 horsepower? The curves, although they make the same peak power, are decidedly different, so let's jump right in and find out how we got this much power from each combination. We're going to start off with our naturally aspirated combination, and this is a 4.6 two-valve, but it's actually not starting out with a PI. PI motor. We started out with a non-PI motor, the non-power improved or performance improved, whatever designations you want to get for the P and the I part of it. This was a 96 to 98 version. And they, this was before they stepped up in the cylinder head flow and the camshaft and the intake manifold for the power improved version in its heyday, basically, and that's what this was. This was actually a 98 version. This thing was rated at 225 horsepower, if I recall, recall in the Mustang. And we ran one. I got this one from where we get all these from, from a wrecking yard. We put, uh, we'll go over the description here. We put long tube headers on it. We put an electric water pump. We had a Mazir electric water pump. No accessories on it. We had an open throttle body, basically. So, you know, this is the way that we normally run these motors on the engine dyno. Long tube headers, open exhaust, no accessories. We run it colder. We run it with an optimized tune and no inlet system on the throttle body. So it makes more power than it's rated at. So how much more power does it make, Richard? Let's take a look. Rated at 225 horsepower. This thing actually made 266 horsepower, 265.8, all the way out here at 4,900 RPM. And owing to its mild nature, made more torque than horsepower, 343 foot-pounds of torque. So now let's take a look and see what happened. How much power were we able to coax out of this? And you guys will understand why I selected, <laughs> actually I selected this motor because it was inexpensive. And uh, it just turned out that it worked out very well for me after I started learning about more about the modular motors way back in the day. So this is our modified version of our motor. And what I did was I made a hybrid. I combined the PI and the non-PI. So we took the non-PI short block added PI heads to it, which increased the static compression higher than it would be if we would have just used a PI because they adjusted the chamber size and the piston design when they went from PI to non-PI to get a similar kind of compression ratio. But when you do the hybrid here, we're, we're looking at, I don't know, somewhere somewhere near 10 to one or something. So what, what we did to further improve the power on this combination, we did the PI head upgrade, but we did ported PI heads. This was back when Brian Tooley was the guy at Total Engine Airflow. And so we took a set of the ported PI heads that they did and put them on. We also put larger camshafts in this, knowing that we were gonna wanna make more power. We put a set of um, Comp Extreme Energy 274 non-PI cams. We could have used PI cams as well. And the difference is the non-PI stuff like this back in the day, 500 lift, the PI stuff, 550 lift. They had three, Comp offered three different versions of both of these PI and non-PI camshafts for the two valve stuff. So we had cams, we had the TEA, Total Engine Airflow ported um, PI heads, and then we had the PI intake manifold, an Accufab 75 millimeter your throttle body and the and the ability looking elbow and when we ran this thing with an optimized tune this was all run on 91 405 or 6 horsepower 406 horsepower and 392 foot pounds of torque so you could see down here below 3600 we lost the maybe a little bit of torque 
not enough that I would worry about it because <laughs> we got gains everywhere else. But this thing would pull really hard, obviously, from 3,500 all the way out past 6,000 RPM. And I think we were, it looked like we were running into maybe a little bit of valve float. We did change the valve springs on the PI heads. But I think we needed even more spring rate for this combination to allow us to run more engine speed. But here's what happens. So we're talking about a motor that makes over 400 horsepower, nearly 400 foot-pounds of torque, and up dramatically from its 265 horsepower origin. So this is our naturally aspirated combination. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we added a supercharger to a stock PI motor. Okay, guys, we've taken a look at our naturally aspirated combination that exceeded 400 horsepower. Now let's take a look at how we got there with a supercharger. So this particular motor was a 4.6 liter PI motor and it was built by the guys at Sean Highland. It actually had forged pistons and forged rods in it, but otherwise was stock. It had a stock crank in it, a stock short block, and I take that back. It might even have a Cobra crank in it, but uh, they did that so that we could run it as a test mule and run lots of power with it. But it had stock just as cast uh no porting pi heads on it a stock pi intake manifold and throttle body we ran this thing with uh stock exhaust manifolds and shorty headers and then finally put long tube headers on it we'll go through all all of those steps and we can take a look at it but this is basically represents because it had stock compression this basically represents what a stock pi motor would be doing on the engine dyno we ran this with a fast XFI management system back in the day. So this thing produced with, with stock exhaust manifolds and with shorty headers because they both made identical power when we tested it. 288 horsepower and 335 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened. And this is the way that we normally run it. This is the way that we ran the other combination. This, is what, this was uh, long tube headers. These were Cook's. 297 horsepower peak torque was up to 344 foot pounds you can see the headers we this is normally what happens headers gain power everywhere all the way through the curve because they have a scavenging effect not just a flow effect and then here's what happened when we put the ford racing supercharger i'll go ahead and show you a, a photo of that it's actually <laughs> behind me on my green screen here here's what happened when we, when we bolted the blower on 383 horsepower and 395 foot-pounds of torque. Naturally, we were happy with installing the blower. And in this configuration, the with the supplied pulley, the blower produced about a peak of 6.8 pounds of boost out here near 6,000 RPM and had kind of a climbing boost curve go, going up. But... I know what you're thinking, Richard, where's the 400 horsepower thing? Well, we, we, we were, kept the motor stock basically for now, but we did change a couple of things. The first thing we did was add a bigger throttle body, and this was a Ford Racing throttle body that we bolted on, and that picked up power, obviously. Peak power was now up to 394 horsepower, so we were getting close. Then we did what everybody does with a supercharger. We installed a smaller 3.4-inch pulley. And that brought peak boost up to 8.7 pounds. And we were over 400 horsepower, 406.7. So we basically matched the power output of the NA combination. And now we are running with the stock cams and stock cylinder head. And the, obviously the intake manifold, the PI intake manifold was gone because it was replaced by the blower assembly, which had its integrated intake manifold. Both of them were making over 400 horsepower. And in the case of the blower, it was making 417 foot-pounds of torque. But we took one more step in this, and I know that this is cheating things up a little bit, but I just wanted to show you. Here's what happened when we put cams in it. We put small comp 262 camshafts in it, and the power jumped up. 436 horsepower peak torque was up to 428 foot pounds and this actually dropped boost from 8.7 pounds with a stock cam down to seven pounds with the with the bigger camshafts and that just goes to show you when you make your na combination uh more more powerful and you make the na combination flow more air when you're running a, a blower with the same size pulley the boost pressure will go down and the power will go up all good things but now let's compare our two 400 horsepower combinations and then we'll look at another one you know thrown in for good measure 
Okay, guys, now let's take a look and see which one of these would you pick? Would you pick the 400 horsepower power NA combination or would you pick the 400 horsepower supercharged combination? And the best way for you to choose is for me to overlay the two graphs and you could see where they made the same amount of peak power. But that doesn't mean the curves were the same. So this is our supercharged combination, 406 or 7 horsepower, 417 foot-pounds of torque. And here is our combination. I'll go ahead and label these, both the horsepower, which is in blue of the two combinations, and the torque, which is in red of the two combinations. And then what you should see is the fact that although they both made almost identical peak power, 406 horsepower or so, from 57 or 5800 RPM on down, <laughs> Everywhere, the supercharged combination made a lot more power. In fact, down near 3,000 RPM, we have about a change of about 80 foot-pounds of torque. We have right at 400 versus 318 foot-pounds of torque down here at 3,100 RPM. So you can see, even though they both make the same amount of peak power, and you might think, oh, well, then that, that means that they should make, you know, they should have equal acceleration and be equal amounts fun. That wouldn't be the case. Having a PI motor with a pulley and a throttle body and this Ford Racing Supercharger, or really almost any kind of positive displacement supercharger, preferably one maybe that had an intercooler on it, but that's another discussion for another day. What you have here is a ton of extra torque. So if you're wanting to spin the tires, or just accelerate the vehicle, having all that extra torque down low, in fact, more torque than the NA combination, basically all the way up until we hit peak power. The supercharged combination, I think, would be my choice. Let me know in the comments what your choice would be, but I know what you're thinking now, Richard. Well, we've got a really good NA combination, and we have boost. Why don't we combine both of those and see what we get? Well, I did just that, so let's check it out. Okay, obviously, if the choice is, do I pick a naturally aspirated combination that's making good power or a supercharged combination that makes good power, the obvious choice is I want the combination of both of those. <laughs> we want the really good NA power and we want boost because we know what happens when we get that. When you add boost to a really healthy NA combination, you get a much better supercharged combination. That's exactly what this was. We did not add the Ford Racing Supercharger because quite honestly, I don't think that that has the flow capacity and the power to support the kind of power that we were ultimately end up making here. And also we wanted to run an intercooler, but I did run our high horsepower NA combination our 400 horsepower naturally aspirated combination that included the non-PI uh, short block with the ported PI heads, cam, and, and the PI intake manifold, the AccuFab throttle body and stuff. We did run that with a Vortec. So we'll go ahead and take a look and see again, 400 horsepower, 406 and a half and 392 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we added our Vortec supercharger. You can see we're up quite a bit up over 600 horsepower, 620 something horsepower. The power curve would have continued to climb past 6,000 RPM. We ran into in this testing one of two things and actually probably both of them. We ran into a belt slippage issue because we were trying to run, I was trying to run the supercharger without the, all of the accessories. We just tried to build a dedicated six rib belt that ran the water pump and the blower and the crank pulley and it was of um <laughs> questionable success we obviously got fairly good it worked fairly well but it would not allow us to run it out to 6500 or 7000 rpm the other thing are valve springs we mentioned that i think we kind of ran into that on the na combination as well so more valve spring and a dedicated dr drive assembly or running it the way that vortec had intended it would allow us because you could see the power curve was still climbing but 623 horsepower and 546 foot-pounds of torque, and the fact that we made peak torque at almost the same RPM as peak power tells us that obviously something is going on. But this is our combination running, you know, a good naturally aspirated combination, and then the Vortex Supercharger. For those that are interested in, this is run at a peak boost out here at 6,000 or 6,100 of 11.3 PSI. The Vortec kit supplied by Vortec came with the air to water intercooler or after cooler, if you will, or char charge cooler. And it also had uh, a pulley combination that produced, like we said, 11.3 pounds on, on this combination. 
and the kit included a Vortec uh, V3 SI trim supercharger, which certainly had more power to give on this combination. But there you have it. This is what happens when you combine the good NA motor with boost instead of having to choose one or the other. Obviously, the best choice is both. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.